was not meant to fly. Air Jordan. Basketball by Nike. Programs normally seen at this time will not be televised tonight so that we may bring you the following CBS Sports special presentation. This was the scene a year ago in Seattle. And tonight, Georgetown and John Thompson are poised to join the great teams from the past that have won two straight national titles. San Francisco in the 50s with Bill Russell. UCLA with Lou Alcindor in the 60s. And the Bruins again in the 70s with Bill Walton. Like those champions from other eras, the Hoyas have been brought to this historic moment by a giant force in the middle. The overpowering presence of Patrick Ewing. Tonight, this superb athlete is playing his last college game. But Ewing's muscle is not the whole Georgetown story. For the supporting cast this year is better than ever before. These 85 Hoyas have more speed and depth than previous teams in the Ewing era. Molly Massimino's scrappy Villanova team is the last hurdle in Georgetown's path to a second straight championship. And the Wildcats have their own blend of impressive skill. Their strong suit in this tournament has been an aggressive and complex defense. Villanova has held four opponents under 50 points. On offense, the Wildcats rely more on poise and finesse. They will try to control the tempo of the game with a structured and deliberate style of attack. They are a veteran team with a history of playing Georgetown and Ewing tough. And tonight, these cats are more confident than ever. So grab your bag of popcorn and step on inside the Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky. It's the 1985 NCAA championship between the Wildcats of Villanova and the Hoyas of Georgetown. You know, this one championship game transcends a lot more than just this season. This is the end of the Patrick Ewing era, and after tonight, we'll know just how good this Georgetown team is. Only five schools have ever won back-to-back -back NCAA championships. It started with Oklahoma State back in 1945. The last school to accomplish that feat was UCLA. They won seven in a row, and it finally ended in 1973. And so now, Billy Packer, Georgetown is just one win away from joining the elite. Well, Brent, just two years ago, we were saying Houston, 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 one of the great teams of all time. Now we're saying Georgetown, Georgetown, Georgetown. Remember, NC State won that game two years ago. So it's not without reason that maybe Villanova could do it tonight. All right, Billy, and also with us tonight is our colleague, Dick Stockton. Let's go up to Dick. Thank you very much, Brent, and good evening, everyone. You know, Georgetown and Patrick Ewing are not the only stories of historical significance. We may be seeing the last NCAA tournament game played without a shot clock. And for Villanova, it may be their best hope because no team has taken advantage of the lack of a clock better than the Wildcats. They would like to see a game in the 50s, cut a 40-minute game into a 20-minute contest, and use free throws down the stretch in a close game. But other coaches have their opinions, and this is what they feel that they would tell Raleigh Massimino. I really think he has a great chance of winning it if he spreads it out and holds the ball. I think going over his defense will give Georgetown some problems. If they can uh, control tempo and make it a 48 to 47 ball game, they got a chance to upset uh, the number one team in the country. He really understands what has to be done to win. Eh? If Roly Massimino is a student of history, he knows that scenes like this two years ago have a way of happening. 20 years before that North Carolina State game, I knew anything could happen on any night. Well, I'll tell you what, the only opinions that count are the two coaches. Massimino's the kind of guy you can walk up to and hug, and he'll hug you back. John Thompson is aloof, and he's a far more private person. But despite their differences, they both are superb technicians. Here's what they have to say. It's probably more to our benefit if it's a high-scoring game. But if we can keep it in the 60s and maybe in the 50s, then we have a heck of a chance. Pinckney is a major factor, I think, because Pinckney has the ability uh, to get the ball inside and create foul problems for people. Right. But Patrick concerns me. <laughs> Probably more so than Edward concerns him. Everybody's looking at poor Villanova. You know, they're the underdogs. The underdogs are not here at the last two games. They're a good team. Well, keep in mind, Villanova played Georgetown tough in two games this year, but the Hoyers are playing exceptional basketball right now. Coming up, the NCAA championship game from Lexington, Kentucky.
championship history since 1976 when, of course, it was Indiana and Michigan in the Big Ten. Billy, we talked so much about Patrick Ewing. We overlook some of the other splendid stars on that Georgetown team. I remember Reggie Williams out in Seattle last year. Well, two years ago, he was the number one high school player in America. Last year, he was the MVP in the championship game, a superlative inside player. Then there was David Wingate, who hounded Chris Mullen on Saturday. Not only a super defensive player, this guy has probably the quickest first step with the ball in college basketball. Over on the Villanova side, Ed Pinckney's the big man, but how about Dwayne McLean? He's been a streak player throughout his career. Great ability, and on Saturday, he played 40 minutes of great basketball. Coming up now, it's one game, and a national championship is at stake. Tonight's 1985 National Championship game between the Villanova Wildcats and the Georgetown Hoyas is sponsored by Chevrolet, who invite you to see, drive, and live today's Chevrolet. Strohs and Stroh Light, by a brew for smoother taste. And by Mr. Goodrich and General Motors Parks. the starting lineups for tonight's championship game and here's the PA announcer at the Rupp Arena Frank Fallon. Good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Rupp Arena for tonight's NCAA National Championship game between the Villanova Wildcats and the Georgetown Hoyas. Now let's meet the starting lineups for Villanova at forward a 6'7 junior from Mystic Connecticut number 21 Harold Presley. For Georgetown at forward, a 6'7 senior from Washington, D.C., number 24, Bill Martin. For Villanova at forward, a 6'6 senior from Worcester, Massachusetts, number 33, Wayne McClain. For Georgetown at forward, a 6'7 sophomore from Baltimore, Maryland, number 34, Reggie Williams. Center, a 6'10 senior from the Bronx, New York, number 54, Ed Pinckney. For Georgetown at center, a 7-foot senior from Cambridge, Massachusetts, number 33, Patrick Ewing. For Villanova at guard, a 6'2 junior from Patterson, New Jersey, number 4, Dwight Wilbur. For Georgetown at guard, a 6'2 junior from Weston, Virginia, number 30, Michael Jackson. For Villanova and guard, a 6-foot senior from Hempstead, New York, number 22, Gary McLean. And Georgetown at guard, a 6'5 junior from Baltimore, Maryland, number 40, David Wingate. And introducing the head coaches. Massimino for Georgetown, John Thompson. The tip-off is next. It's Georgetown and Villanova. Georgetown's march toward basketball history began with Lehigh and then concluded with St. John's in the semifinal Saturday afternoon. As for Villanova, they came in eighth seeded in the southeast region. They beat Dayton at home and then eliminated Memphis State in the semifinal. These two teams have played each other twice this year. Villanova led both times at the half, but then Patrick Ewing and the Hoyas pulled it out. 52 to 50 in overtime and 57-50 when the rematch was staged in Landover. Patrick Ewing got that tap. That ought to be Villanova ball. Good call. Brent, when you look at those scores of Villanova in the NCAA tournament, they have played every game in the 50s. That is their game, so fans ought to keep up with that early. Georgetown starts in a 1-3-1 half-court trap, trying to force Villanova to go faster. They get a turnover right away off the defense, and they break free with Jackson, but there was a whistle. Gary McLean committed the foul as they came across the timeline. And if you're John Thompson, that's exactly what you want to do early in this ballgame. Create a pace on defense that forces Villanova to push the ball towards the basket. 